Hey everyone, I'm Mike Kazmer. That's it, it's the end. Today we're here to take a look at Yeti's brand new bike, the SB165. Over the last year or so, they've introduced the SB100, the SB130, and the SB150. This bike takes its place as the longest travel and slackest bike in the lineup. It also has the smallest wheels, 27.5 inch wheels on this guy. Those other ones had 29 inch wheels. It's designed to be kind of their huck bike, basically, a modern free ride bike. Um, as you can guess by the name, it has 165 millimeters of rear travel, 180 millimeter fork up front, 63.5 degree head angle. All those numbers kind of put it in that sort of almost downhill bike territory, a little bit more than you'd want for an enduro bike. And for that reason, uh, Yeti's calling it a rip bike. Seems like maybe a little silly name, but basically by their thinking, rip bike is the bike you're gonna grab for, go ride the hardest, gnarliest trails you can find, you know, hit some jumps, maybe go to the bike park. That's where they're situating this. Where the other bikes are a little bit more oriented toward the racer. Someone wants something a little lighter, a little more efficient feeling, but might not be going out there, send it in the bike park day in and day out. But of course you can race a rip bike, rip a race bike. Those are all fine. All right, we mentioned that 63.5 degree head angle, but let's take a look at some of the other geometry numbers of this bike. Um, right here's a size large. This has a 480 millimeter reach. Paired that with some fairly short 433 millimeter chainstays and a relatively steep 77 degree seat angle. So all those numbers are designed to make a bike that you can pedal to the top of the hill pretty comfortably. And then really it's biased towards the descent since this bike, you know, like I said, kind of a mini downhill bike, free ride kind of thing. That's where those numbers situate it. Um, on the scale, it's sitting in around 32 pounds, so not super light, but for this build kit, coil shock, pretty reasonable. Like the other bikes in Yeti's lineup, this one uses that Switch Infinity suspension design. When it first came out, people thought these are two little shocks down there. They're not. They're just two little Kashima coated sliders that Yeti's designers are able to manipulate um, the position and how much they move in order to affect how the bike rides. Basically the idea is that you can have a nice uh, supportive platform for pedaling and then as you hit a bigger bump, it should kind of really let it go into its travel without any unwanted pedal kickback. For this bike, they've made it a little bit more progressive because it's designed to run with a coil shock where the SP150 designed for more of an air shock that had a 15% um, progressivity. This one has 27% progressivity. So you're gonna have a little bit of more bottom out resistance for hit those big drops. The last thing you want is to be clanging off the bottom there. So uh, works well the coil, but you could run an air shock if you wanted. This definitely isn't an inexpensive bike. The frame alone for the Turk frame is $3,999. As it sits with this build kit, it's $7,699. All right, so how's this thing handle out on the trail? I've got a good half dozen rides on it so far, and I can say it's a fun bike. It definitely needs rougher trails though, rough, steep trails. If you're planning on just even mellow flow trails, you can kind of feel, it feels bigger, a little bit sluggish, um, not unexpected, but definitely not the bike for mellow terrain. You just need rowdy, difficult terrain to make it come alive. Otherwise it just feels like it's twiddling its thumbs, not what it's designed for. When it is faced with like a big drop or jumps, it's super fun. It's a fairly short back end, so it kind of has this little bit more liveliness than you might expect. And then there's still enough length up front, so when you do get a long straightaway, it's plenty stable. I do agree with Yeti that it doesn't quite feel like a race bike, like say compared to the SB150. That one just has a feel, it's a little quicker, a um, little more efficient feeling. This one, it's kind of all about the travel and all about just nice, supple, suck up anything, take big hits, no problems. This thing goes uphill pretty decently too. I mean, it's not gonna be your XC race bike, but the climbing position itself is comfortable. You know, it's a longer bike, but with a steep seat angle, nice and upright, can spin out the miles. Um, I did use the climb switch a fair bit. Seems like it's a little bit more likely to use its travel compared to, like I said, the SB150. If you really stand up and mash down, a coil shock will get moving, but um, it's the kind of bike that's suited to the sort of like climb, descend style rise. <laughs> This clean looking carbon frame kind of fits in with the rest of Yeti's lineup as far as the overall aesthetic goes. Um, internal cable routing, room for a water bottle, so I can take a coil or an air shock. And a reduced offset 37 millimeter fork up front. It's kind of the way things are going for both 29ers and 27.5 inch bikes. Bolt on through axles without any extra little quick release mechanisms that could potentially hang up on rocks and roots and that type of thing. Nice low seat tubes, you can run a longer travel dropper post. This one on size large, 175 millimeters of drop. So plenty of room to get that seat out of the way for those descents. All right, so there you have it. Brand new Yeti SB165. Pretty much a modern free ride bike. Let us know what you think in the comments below.